Hi everyone, this is Pauline Leb from Art for Mag and today I'm with Tandiwe Moriu, a talented Kenyan photographer who glorifies women through bold and vibrant uh, colors of Africa. So Tandiwe, it would be great to hear about your journey and being a woman artist in Kenya. But first, maybe you can uh, start by telling us how old you were when you started photography and why you chose uh, this specific medium. I don't know if I chose the medium or if it chose me, <laughs> but I picked up my first camera when I was 14 years old. My dad is actually the one who introduced me um, to photography with my sisters because he wanted to teach us to be very independent, strong women, comfortable with technology. And so he thought photography might be a good way to introduce us to technology. And um, I remember the moment he put the camera in my hand, it was just chemistry. It, it, it just felt perfect. I, I can't draw, I can't sing, but I could take pictures and it's a way I could see the world around me, translate and, and question the things that were happening in my life and to people around me. Um, and so photography became my medium. It became my voice. Nice. <laughs> but I, I believe um, photography is um, quite a male-dominated industry in Kenya. So how did you succeed in establish yourself as an artist, being a woman? That is a very long story, but the short version is um, when I began to interact more and more with photography in my free time, I'd run home after school to, to do photography and practice. Um, I quickly realized I didn't want to tell stories. I didn't want to capture stories. So I, I realized I didn't want to be a journalist. I wanted to create. And that just really excited me, the thought of making all these magical worlds that people could enter and experience um, always attracted me. And so I looked and I thought, oh, I'll be a fashion photographer, like I could do Vogue covers, this would be amazing. And then I quickly realized living and working in Kenya that you can't really make a living off fashion photography, at least not then. Okay. Um, and I was 17, so really... Oh, you were super young. I was very young. <laughs> This is what I wanted to do all my life. Um, so I thought, okay, what else can I do that allows me to create and I don't have to be a journalist? And some photographers introduced me to commercial photography, which is creating advertisements. And there you're also creating worlds to sell a product. Um, and so I thought, okay, I want to do that. Um, but what I didn't realize was there was no women who are doing that. And so I just put all my energy into becoming a commercial photographer. And no matter what anybody told me, I was like, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to prove you wrong. I think it helped that I was very young. Um, so I, I was still living at home, so I didn't have to pay rent. Um, but uh, my parents raised me to believe I didn't have limitations as a woman. And I think that's a big part of my story. And that's why it's a big part of my work. I was determined that my gender would have nothing to do with my ability to take great pictures. Um, and so it was just through sheer determination and being really stubborn. Nobody could tell me I couldn't do it. I would just work harder that I managed to push my way to the industry. But I think I also need to add at some point, um, these people who saw my determination and my desire to be a photographer and they came alongside me and they mentored me. And they, they taught me how to survive as a, an artist and some of the things um, that come around being an artist that, that are outside of making the art. How do you market yourself? How do you um, describe your work well? So they taught me how to do those things that helped me really um, refine my style, find my style and then refine it yeah. and then share my message with other people. And do you think it has been harder being a woman or it would have been the same if you had to be a man? I think coming from a third world um, country, it's more difficult, but I think being a woman adds a layer of difficulty um, for many reasons. I think the culture I come from has beautiful ways of celebrating women, but it also has very clear definitions of the roles women fulfill. And it's a little bit difficult to thrive outside of those definitions, which is what a lot of my work is about. But one of the things I quickly realized was I have to be very bold and confident in, um, 
talking about my work and what I'm doing and, and why you should hire me, which culturally was not something you're encouraged to do very much. You're supposed to be very humble, yeah. but to succeed, you need to be able to promote yourself. And so there were all these things that were counterintuitive that I had to learn as a woman, where maybe the men didn't have to struggle as much to promote themselves, for example. And you were just telling, talking about your art, but I was curious about, you, you photography a lot of uh, women, you do these absolutely gorgeous uh, women portraits. And so how would you say your past, your journey uh, influenced your art? My journey is completely all over um, my art um, because it has been an experience of learning as a woman to be confident in who I am, irrespective of what my culture sees or irrespective of what my culture tells me I should be. Um, and in, in creating this work in photographing women, it's been amazing to just see how incredible women are, but how little they appreciate themselves or how invisible they can be even to themselves. They are very confident in their abilities to be mothers, to be wives, but maybe they're not as confident in feeling like they're wise, feeling like they're educated, feeling like they have something to offer the world, even if they're doing amazing things. Yeah. Um, and so in my journey, I had to make peace with some of the things about myself that my culture didn't celebrate. And in my work, I want to celebrate those things about women, the, the invisible things or the things that we don't view as beautiful. I want to bring them to the forefront um, because they're worth celebrating. Just because we're women doesn't make them less amazing. That's great. <laughs> and uh, you, were, you are still living in, um, in Nairobi and it is uh, um, recognized uh, nowadays as being the leading place for contemporary art uh, in East Africa. Um, so can you say a few words about this uh, thriving art place? I think it's an exciting time to be in Nairobi. It's an exciting time to be a Kenyan. Um, but one of the things that's happening, at least I feel for my generation of artists and younger, is we are finally acknowledging and embracing our new identity as, you know, I'm, I'm a Kenyan, yes, and so I come from this very traditional culture, Um, with a lot of history, but at the same time, I grew up in a world where I had internet and I was connected to the West. And so it's this fusion of Westernization with traditional coming together to form what I call the new Africa. And a lot of the art you see is around that. Um, we are rediscovering who we are and we're finally at the stage, I think, where we're not ashamed of that, but we're beginning to celebrate it and explore it and ask, what does it mean? What does it look like? And so there's this energy in the air that is very excited um, and all this amazing art that's coming out of Nairobi and Kenya just because you know we're finally comfortable in our new identity. Thank you so much Tandiwe and just to conclude uh, can you what can you expect uh, of you in the future in the next few months? Well, in the next few months, I'm very excited to be preparing for a solo show that I will be having at 190 Gallery in Paris in October. Great. Sounds exciting. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and all this uh, very interesting interview. And I wish you the very best for your solo show. Thank you. Thank you. It was my pleasure to be here. Bye, Tandiwe. Bye.